Hey there everyone, Bear Tracker Nature Films here, and today I'm under a tan oak tree, and this tan oak tree is quite productive, as you can see by looking at the ground beneath it. There are tons of acorns here. Most of these acorns have been broken open. So let's look a little closer and see who's been feeding on these acorns. So if I pick up an acorn here, um, I'm just going to pick up a few random acorns to show you. So let's uh, look a little closer at these. I'll see if the camera will focus. So it's fall and the acorns are being fed on. And I picked up this large sample of acorns just to show you what it looks like when deer are feeding on acorns. So right here you can see that these have been crushed. And you can actually see marks in there from the teeth of the deer that crushed these. So what deer do is they grab them and crunch them up and uh, break them open and get the acorns. This one is hollow. I don't feel an acorn in there. So that must be why they rejected that one. This one had an acorn, but the deer got it out. This one doesn't look like it had an acorn in it. Sometimes the weevils will kill them long before the deer can get to them. This one here, See those indentations on it? Those are from the teeth of the deer. So the acorn is gone, but the crushing marks on it tell you that this was a deer rather than a squirrel. And the same with this one. You can see those marks where the deer's teeth and just crushed it. Now they have really good molars, and they use their molars for crushing these things open. Other animals like squirrels have a tendency to bite them open and this one, I believe, was done by a squirrel. You can see a couple of marks right at the tip of my thumb there that are probably from the squirrel's incisors. They hold them on the ends like this, bite into them, and peel off strips of the, the uh, acorn shell and drop it, and then they feed on what's inside. So a lot of times with rodents, you'll find marks like this. Um, with uh, your mice, they tend to open them from one end usually, and you'll find tooth marks on that end that we call chatter. So there's two different species that have been opening these acorns. You've got your squirrel and your deer. And squirrels also do this. So I'm looking at an acorn sitting on top of a log right here. And this piece was left behind. Whoops. This piece was left behind here by a squirrel. And squirrels will take them to a perch, and they'll feed on them there. So you'll find remains of the acorns up on top of logs, which is where I am right now. Looking at these acorns is on top of a log. Here's a bit of an acorn that was left behind. And uh, this is half of the acorn. The rest of it must have been eaten. But this is still kind of damp to the touch. So this might be a relatively fresh sign. And I think I'll leave this here in case the squirrel comes back. But Looking around on top of this old log, you can see an acorn sitting there. And then you can see some old shells over there where the squirrel was working them. And here's a couple more acorns just sitting on top. So the squirrel will probably be back, and I don't want to take its food. There's old sign right in here that could be a year old. Those acorns are already dry. They're covered with uh, leaves and other debris, so they've been there for a while. So you can tell that the squirrel has been using this log as its perch to feed on acorns for a long time. So just looking back under the tree, I wanted to show you the extent of all these acorns here. I'm walking around the base of the tree, and there's just acorns scattered all over in here. And I'm, there, you can hear them crunching under my feet. And right here are some dropped acorns. Let's look at these. These might be interesting to see. I'll take them over to the log so you can see them. So the little pieces of acorns here that I found show tooth marks on them. Let me put it in the sun so you can get an, a an eye on the, uh, the paired incisor marks on there. And this one came from a squirrel. And so you can see how when it opened the shell, like this, opened it from the side, and took it off, whoops, then it started feeding on the acorn, 
and the uh, incisor marks are running parallel. So this one, the end was bitten off. I don't know if the camera is going to focus. So this one has a nice chunk bitten out of the center of it, which shows up, I don't know, the sun may not be as good there. Let's try it in the shade. Now you can see the little mark there where it got bitten by the squirrel. And the same with this one, which has marks on the outside. See the parallel marks here from the incisors of the squirrel. And they're really small. Those marks could not have been made by a deer. They're way too small. And the same with this one. Notice right there, those paired marks. So these are actually the acorns themselves. This is the food part. This is what they want to eat. So I'm going to leave these on top of this log here so the squirrel can eat them when they're ready. But I think what happened is, because they were sitting under the tree, the squirrel had uh, picked these up and opened them and started feeding and then for whatever reason lost his grip on it and dropped it. Or he got startled and dropped it. So, however that happened, the acorn ended up on the ground. However, there are so many acorns right now, it wasn't worth the time and energy for the squirrel to go back down the trunk of the tree, run over there to the ground, grab the acorn, and go back up. So it was much more energy efficient for the squirrel to simply grab another acorn off the tree than to put all that work into going, getting the one it dropped. Towards the end of the season, when the acorns are getting to be fewer in number, and harder to find, then the squirrels might put more effort and energy into harvesting the ones that they accidentally drop on the ground. But for right now, when there's a really big abundance of these things, and they're very common, easy to get, the squirrels aren't going to spend a lot of energy picking up a dropped acorn. So that provides uh, food for the animals that are on the ground, like the deer. Um, and that just makes an acorn that the deer doesn't have to work so hard opening and crushing open with its teeth because the acorn's already been opened. Pretty cool, huh, how that works. Uh, the wildlife seem to be helping each other out. Maybe not intentionally, but in a way, they are helping each other out. So there you have the story of a productive tan oak tree and the acorns that it produces and the wildlife that feed on them and uh, keep the forest healthy. Hope you enjoyed.